Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is the championship, <laughs> as it were. We are in the finals, the playoffs. Best of three, or the top 32 right now. This is a best of three series. Game one between, on the blue side, Google Ward Search. Google, of course, the infamous company that has long since won the internet. They are playing for the charity Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders is fantastic charity. They send doctors to the war-torn regions of the world and developing countries facing diseases that they don't have the infrastructure to handle. And they put their lives on the line uh, to try and help the people out there and help cure those diseases, help uh, treat the people who aren't going to be treated otherwise, uh, because it's just quite frankly not safe. So a very brave group of people and a great charity that enables them to go out there and do that important work. And they are against on the red side, Bluehost. Bluehost is a website hosting company that I've personally used because they were the best deal back when I last checked. So, huge shout out to them for value. <laughs> they are playing for uh, Huntsman's Cancer Foundation. Uh, that's a group that raises funds for the Huntsman Cancer Institute, go figure, uh, which is one of the top cancer research facilities and hospitals in the US. So, fantastic cause there. I'm very glad to see them uh, playing for that. Just... Just letting them know that we will be uploading the cast of this later uh, to the uh, archive, as always. Um, so, without further ado, let's get into the pick ban of this match. Uh, this is, of course, match one. And on the blue side, we see the bands coming out are Thresh, Vi, and Dr. Mundo. Vi, definitely a targeted ban here. Uh, Vi, uh, the Big Bomb Day, Big Bomb Betty, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever, the first person on the red side, their jungler, uh, certainly is familiar with Vi and knows how to uh, make the most out of her kit as well as Rek'Sai. So this first pick Rek'Sai we're seeing here come in from the blue side as part of a denial uh, to try and push uh, the jungler for the red side off of both Vi and Rek'Sai. So uh, good pickups there. I wouldn't be surprised uh, to see something on the likes of Udyr come out instead, but uh, certainly uh, their jungler has a very deep champion pool, so we could see anything come out of him. Uh, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see exactly what gets picked up here uh, in a minute, but uh, to talk more about the bands initially, uh, we of course have from the red side coming out Aurelia, Sejuani, and Hecarim. Uh, Sejuani is definitely a target ban at um, the jungler of the blue side, though that sort of uh, just ended up playing into their strategy a little bit of uh, picking away the champion pool from the jungler of the red side. So that Sejuani ban, not the most effective in this first matchup here. Um, but definitely shows they, they've done their research here. Uh, Hecarim, obviously a very strong ban. Uh, familiar uh, with that uh, pick as well as h uh, should, er, uh Should he choose to go mid with it? We've seen a lot of Hecarim in the top. Um, as of late, even going with the Teleport Smite, think of that challenge Smite in the top lane, but it looks like uh, h roll with that bandway is gonna go on something more traditional here with that fairly safe standard Orianna. It looks like we will be seeing Susan in the top lane. Oh, I am all of a sudden so excited for this match. <laughs> and we are going to see Teleport Ghost on Nasus here as well. So this is going to be a very scary Nasus. I mean, whenever you see that Nasus running Ghost, you get a little fear in you. Because <laughs> that is somebody who is a confident Nasus. Uh, very willing to be vulnerable to ganks, um, especially uh, if they're going into a uh, Lissandra who has the ability to slow them down, possibly even lock them down once she hits six. So that shows a lot of confidence there, and I am excited to see how this top lane turns out. And with both the Nasus and the Jinx locked in for this blue side here, they are going super late game, as well as the Orianna as well. This is a very late game oriented comp. The only thing uh, that isn't very late game is the Rex side, which uh, it does have a lot of early game gank, ganking potential, but I mean, that's something you always want from a jungler anyway. If your team was all scaling, I mean, the red side would just invade your jungle and just be in your jungle and kill you and feed off you. 
lane, so <laughs> there's not there wouldn't be much you could do about that. When you went left lane to go defend your jungle, you they would just follow you and kill you. So uh, you need a little bit of early power somewhere there on the team. And certainly not like these champions don't do anything at all early game, but this is a very late game composition on the blue side, uh, as opposed to particularly on the red side. I mean, Leona obviously scales well into the late game too, but she can create a lot of fights in the early game. So she works very well with Graves, who is a huge lane bully, very strong early game. So uh, I would be expecting to see a possible lane swap coming out of this blue side here uh, from that Jinx Jam lane to try and get away from Graves. Um, Leona, make sure that they can't jump on their face. <laughs> get a little distance between the two, farm up a little bit. Uh, the concern with that though, is that it would mean Nasus would have to go initially in this double jungle route with Rek'Sai, which wouldn't be that bad initially because uh, they can just do some of the camps with a little more minions, the wolves, the razor beaks, let Nasus actually last hit those minions to start rolling on his Q farm. But the concern with that would be once Nasus has to go back to lane in the bottom lane, should they choose a lane swap here on the blue side, he would have a lot of trouble hitting, uh, getting those Q stacks um, because I'm sure that's, there's going to be a very strong freeze should this be a lane swap situation. And that freeze is going to make it very hard for Nasus to actually do what he needs to get done there. But uh, we'll see how it works out here. Obviously we're not quite in game yet. Uh, so we still have yet to see how this is going to go. And uh, very notably we have a mid lane Nidalee. Oh man, takes me back. Takes me back. <laughs> We're, we're going to have a, a lot of AP coming out of this team. Uh, that's going to be just a full-on glass can in Italy. So I'm looking forward to see seeing the matchup between her and Oriana. Uh, Oriana able to play pretty safe, but if Nidalee can really land those spears, it doesn't really matter how safe Oriana is playing because Nidalee will just jump on her. Um, it's going to be very tricky as well to use that... Um, Oriana ball for zoning and trying to get damage. Of course, you want to try and position that ball uh, in a place where you can harass at the same time as you do AoE damage to the minions around to sort of get and maintain control of the lane. But with Nidalee, she's so hyper mobile uh, in that cougar form. Again, let alone if she can land spears on you or throw traps under your feet, uh, she should be able to dodge around all of that. So. I think that'll be a pretty rough lane uh, for Oriana here. Um, we'll see how that goes. She did opt to take the Ignite. Uh, I think that's a probably a good choice overall because there's going to be lots of skirmishes going back and forth. And with Nidalee's heal ability, I mean, she's obviously going to negate some of that self-healing ability Nidalee has in lane when she does get help from Rek'Sai to get those ganks. But uh, it does make her quite vulnerable to a lot of harassment. So we very almost never see Oriana's go uh, full sustain with that flask start. Uh, and I probably wouldn't expect to see that even in this matchup where there's going to be a lot of poke headed her way. Uh, we'll probably just see uh, Command Protect leveled first. Um, maybe not leveled first, but taken at level 1 uh, to try and be able to weather the storm that is Nidalee. Uh, see if she can uh, manage through that lane all right and wait until she can actually get a gank from Rek'Sai here early on. Oh my goodness gracious, I never took us off the actual screen. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, let me actually show you the champions we have instead of just telling you. Goodness gracious. Well, at least, at least we all know what website this is for. This is for the After Hours Gaming League. I'm sure you guys have that website by now. <laughs> well, I'm glad we noticed that at this point. All right. Anyways, into the game now. Um, <laughs> my apologies for that. We're, so we are going to see um, the flash start here from Nasus. Uh, typically, we see either a Dorn shield or that flash start coming out of the Nasus, given that Lissandra is going to be more about harassing with that ability um, that she'll use to farm and get some AoE damage on him, and not as much about the auto attacks. She is ranged, so there will be a lot of auto damage coming in anyway, but since she won't be having any AD, like, 
any significant AD, I should say. Uh, that's going to be largely insignificant. So the Doran Shield start, not as important here. Just overall sustain start, the more important out of those two. So the Flask, going to cover Nasus plenty. Going to give him enough sustain to actually sit up there, farm it out, rely on his passive for a little bit of lifesteal. If he gets low on mana, trying to trade back and forth, throwing down that E occasionally to actually get some decent trades. He can, of course, use that flask charge uh, to get some of that mana back as well, so he should be all right. See a little bit of a line of scrimmage here. Rek'Sai poked up just for a moment to force the ward out of that Lissandra, but nothing too severe here. And we do, of course, see that Nautilus in the jungle. Uh, I was very surprised to see that earlier today because usually we see that Nautilus in support in one of the other best of three games we were casting. We, uh, I assumed that was going to be a Nautilus support, but uh, it looks like we... You know, are having a lot of Nautilus jungle, so that's fantastic. I always love to see Nautilus coming in the jungle. Once you uh, just see that hook coming into a lane out of a <laughs> bush, you know you're done for. So it's always <laughs> a fun champion to have in the jungle. Um, a little bit of precipitation. Looks like we are going to have uh, strong leashes here. For both sides, starting on the bot side here to get the, that extra little bit of leash. Both ABCs should be getting to their lane just in time as per normal. Jinx offing to try and push this lane a little bit, but with that Relic Shield, uh, Leona is going to definitely be pushing that back into just as quickly. Java, do not install. There we go. Anyways. So some early trades going back and forth. That shield putting in some work. Uh, they did not opt for that lane swap as we were uh, considering early early on. So uh, looks like there's going to be an early level 2 for the red side here. So we started to see already Jinx and Janna starting to play a little ways back here. Probably the uh, right decision there because once that level 2 is hit, there's going to be some problems. As you saw right there, that Leona stepping forward right as that last uh, minion was about to die to try and get that set up. But... Throwing down the ward defensively off that trinket there. Make sure that Leona stays in vision. Nothing silly goes on here. And now that we're all level 2, everything's settled back down a little bit. So, of course, Leona still going to be very threatening all throughout. And here's that early gank from Rek'Sai. Unfortunately, not able to get too much out of it. Takes a short turret shot for his trouble there. But will create a little extra pressure onto that Nidalee here. As we see, Nasus. Hanging out in that top lane, doing his Nasus things. Let's actually see here. 24 stacks as of right now, about to get some nice stacks off that cannon. Oh, actually, misses that cannon. Unfortunate there. A little bit of harass here coming from Mori with those uh, auto attacks that are a little stronger than average because of that passive. Actually, gonna turn onto that Nidalee a little bit to try and juke out some of this damage from Nautilus, but it won't be enough. That will be the first blood. Going on to Oriana there. Or excuse me, going on to Nautilus, getting the kill on Oriana there. Unfortunate for Oriana, she was just pushed up a little bit too far. Was getting some good harassment down on that Nidalee, but uh, the out harass game isn't one you really want to play with Nidalee. She's certainly got the um, <laughs> jinx. Having a little fun here in the bottom lane. Nidalee definitely has the sustain to deal with that, so. All you're doing is making yourself a little bit vulnerable to those ganks, and especially like we were saying earlier, when Nautilus comes to gank you, you've got some issues, so. Gonna have to play a little bit safer here. We do see her uh, getting the um, Mole Magic Mantle, I believe is the full name for that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and a Fairy Charm. So, trying to build up to that Chalice as quickly as possible. Obviously, having died, she didn't have the right back timing there, but. That's okay. Some good, uh... Oh, unfortunately, missing that cannon mini is Jinx, and she stepped forward and ended up just taking Harass uh, for free there. That shield did block out most of the damage from Janna, though, so... Uh, and an overall fairly equal trade there, and uh, actually gonna miss uh, the engagement there is Leona. I'm just gonna try and step forward in auto, though, actually does miss that as well, so... Zenith Blade and then the uh, stun onto a minion there not working out ideally for this Leona Graves lane here and uh, again you know we the Jinx just wants to survive this lane they don't necessarily need to win this lane it's just a matter of survival here and they are gonna ping out that Rek'Sai here as she pokes around 
gonna run into Nautilus in the jungle there. I'm gonna probably just tunnel away. There she goes. She's fine. With her coming out in the top lane to try and prevent some of that uh, follow-up damage from Lissandra. Gonna have to just lifesteal, chug that last, uh, last charge under the turret, and probably go back and teleport in before that next wave comes. It is a cannon wave, so Nasus should be alright. Yeah, he's gonna head on back. He'll be perfectly fine. Challenging Smite is ready for that Rek'Sai, so anywhere she ganks now going forward, she's gonna be uh, very strong and very dangerous in those ganks, <laughs> as if uh, being a Rek'Sai weren't enough already. So definitely keep our eyes peeled for that. Right now, despite that early kill and uh, being forced to back at an inopportune time there, uh, Oriana is in a 10 CS lead over this Nidalee right now. We see some harassment coming down. Oh, the Zenith Blade misses though, unfortunately, just shooting that a little bit wide. Ness is going to be able to keep on Q farming up here in the top lane now that he's back. He's got his uh, uh, ingredients there heading on up to the Spirit Visage. Goodness gracious, why can't I remember? The Spectre's Cowl, there we go. So he's going to have a little bit easier time here dealing with this Lissandra here in the top lane as he worked his way up to that Spirit Visage. Of course, Spirit Visage, I love to start Spirit Visage on that Nasus because you get uh, instant huge benefit from your passive lifesteal. And here's a lot of damage, harassment coming onto that Graves with the uh, Janet Shield to give that extra AD onto Jinx. Going to force that Graves to back here. Not sure if that's the most opportune time for him to back. We'll see what he can pick up. He actually does get the BF Sword, so he's going to be just fine. Uh, but that's going to leave Jinx and uh, Janet in that bottom lane. Give them a little time. Srexai so comes in, has a little fight there. Put some harassment down on that Nidalee, but she's all the way by her turret. She's going to be just fine as well. Fairly straightforward start here. Uh, not too much action. Rek'Sai making herself known. Not really able to get too much done at this stage in the game, but it's alleviating that pressure. And this is overall what we uh, want to see if we're the blue side. Definitely want to see a game that doesn't have too much action. Maybe give up a kill here. Maybe lose, uh, uh, have an unsuccessful gank there. But what matters most is that we're getting time. Getting Nasus farmed up here. Getting that Jinx time to build our items. Actually, we're going to see a very aggressive flash here coming in from Nautilus who wants to fight in this jungle. Contest the red buff. He doesn't get it. And the shield from Janna is going to be enough. But actually, Janna is jumped on by that Leona. And she's going to have to flash away the heal. Not enough to keep her alive for much longer after that initial burst. And that will be another kill going on to... Uh, this red team, particularly on to that Nidalee, so Nidalee definitely getting uh, the gold she needs to start becoming a huge threat here. Does have a little uh, that's just throwing down the ultimate there, forcing out the Sandra out of lane there. Um, but yeah, Nidalee uh, is going to be a huge threat here once she gets that gold up as the first dragon goes down to this red side here. She will be behind in CS, but uh, that kill will definitely help even that on up. So the roaming potential paying off here for Nidalee, uh, even though she was having a uh, less than uh, perfect laning phase here, definitely made up for that with the early roam down there to make that uh, very aggressive flash into the attempt to steal red buff worth it for the Nautilus as they come away with the kill unanswered. But again, right now, we see even just looking at the gold score, uh, after all that exchange, uh, the blue side is still up by a negligible amount at this point, but is still up right now. So, uh, giving up those two kills, not the worst thing uh, that could happen, uh, as all the lanes are ahead right now in CS. Oh, the Zenith Blade just barely missing. Beautiful juke out by that Janna to bait the Zenith Blade out. That's going to be the ultimate as well. Coming from Leona, thinking that the Graves ultimate uh, uh, chained with that would be enough burst to kill this Jinx off, but unfortunately for them, Jinx barely surviving that. Now with the Janna shield, should be able to hang out here just long enough to farm out these uh, minions and then go back should she choose to. 
actually gonna opt to hang out here. Nasus forcing that uh, Lissandra away as the spear does land onto Oriana here. Chose not to follow it up, but they might follow up this spear on it. No, they're actually gonna back away. Not gonna risk it. Not not too bloodthirsty. Gonna opt to play a little safe here. Not risk their uh, advantage at this point in the game. Want to maintain that. Gonna just take the successful harassment and back away as Leona's gonna clear out Ward Nautilus. Going deep into Rek'Sai's jungle. I am very surprised to see this turn of events where Rek'Sai is uh, the one being countered jungle by Nautilus. Uh, I mean, very. I mean, we wanted to see some interesting play here from the Nautilus jungle. I mean, that's it. And having a Nautilus uh, supported by this newly mid lane can actually uh, counter jungle very effectively here. As we see Janna going around just trying to do ward duty here. Noriana looking to uh, get some more vision down. Is going to be able to force that Nautilus away. Uh, Nidalee, of course, having to leave him there. Once Oriana spots him, he's going to back on out of there. Because he no longer has that support. But certainly has gotten a lot of deep wards in. Nasus farming up. Actually gonna go for some trades here. Gonna be forced away by that Lissandra. But he's... Nasus is just gonna lifesteal on up. No worries for him. And just keep on farming as Nasus is wont to do. See, of course, that challenging spine now available with the uh, warrior enchantment, I believe. It's kind of hard to tell on that, but yeah, that is the warrior enchantment completed as well for Rek'Sai. So, the ganks uh, sort of at their deadliest right now. Rek'Sai, with that ultimate available, has the global presence as well. So, we'll keep an eye out to see if she creates any tunnel networks uh, around the map uh, in some lane bushes here, either in the top lane or in the bottom lane. So she can uh, ult right back to the opposite side of the map. Perhaps make it th make them think it's a farm alarm here, but uh, actually it would be the real alarm for the first time in a while. <laughs> you see you're just hanging out in Tribush is this Rek'Sai. It is pink, so they know there's no vision there. Uh, but unfortunately for them, just not quite working out the dragon. We'll be spawning here in about two minutes. Nas is trading very effectively here with this Lissandra, of course, uh, with that Spear of Visage almost completed here. Be able to sustain through that damage very solidly now. Uh, but he is out of mana and flash charges, so he's going to have to back right here. There is a cannon minion wave, but hold that thought because Jinx gets engaged on Janna. You're having to use that ultimate. Perfectly knocks them back though and saves the Jinx. Beautiful play from Janna and what should have been a dead Jinx is a Jinx who's gonna be all right and probably actually gonna be able to back here before this next dragon so she'll be able to heal on up in Graves. Certainly not the healthiest guy himself right now either so Nautilus is in this bottom lane so they are looking to make this fight happen still but so is Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai taking those Gromps, uh, or those Krugs I believe. Krups is hanging out, out just outside of vision there. Looks like they're just gonna, the red side just gonna throw down some vision here and back away. Good use of the zoning there from this bot lane to force the red side away from that pink ward. Gonna get nothing for that, I'm just gonna give up a free ward charge there. Nessus. Now back without that teleport though, so uh, we do definitely have to keep that in mind as the dragon here is about to spawn. Jinx has created that pressure in the bottom lane, but the red side seems very poised to go for this dragon. Jinx actually thinking about going back, but with that ward they're going to see that this dragon is totally set up for, so they might just give it up here. Given how prepped it already is, maybe thinking they should opt to just give this second dragon up and worry about wait, making it to the late game again. They are uh, nearly a thousand gold in the lead despite being two kills down just relying on those uh, laning fundamental mechanics right now. Trying to pull the dragon out doesn't get it too far out. Little do they know unfortunately that it was not even going to be contested here. Rek'Sai 
just gonna opt to uh, do some counter jungle. Now that's some very good play from this Rex. They're gonna give up the dragon. Uh, you definitely want to get something for it, so if not a turret, you definitely want to get some counter jungling. And unfortunately, Oriana very far up here trying to get some damage on that mid lane turret. And we do see she did it, almost get the turret. Oh gosh, only 95 hit points. Hopefully somebody from blue side can go blow on that before there's a next back cycle for them. So they can get some of that gold. Uh, but unfortunately, it looks like uh, they're not going to be able to do it at the moment. But hopefully there's not going to be too many backs coming out. Lissandra gonna claw away, no worries there. As she does now have that Rob Ages completed. Beautiful zap there, catching him in the dash. The old Super Mega Death Rocket Ultimate from Jinx. Not gonna land, unfortunately, though. So Graves will make it out of there with his life intact. And all of a sudden, are we talking about the stage in the game where Graves has to be worried about being in lane with the Jinx? I mean, there, there certainly was a 2v1 aspect to that there, so don't... Uh, not give him enough credit for that, but Sandra looking to go in, but here comes Nasus with his ultimate turned on. They are going to throw down the ultimate onto herself is Lissandra, but in the meantime, Rek'Sai taking quite a bit of damage, going to flash under the turret, and no, Rek'Sai is enough to prevent the kill. No help from Nasus needed there. Rek'Sai able to defend herself under the turret, and that is a kill on to Rek'Sai. Getting the flash for free as well. Burning no summoners in that engagement from the blue side. And all of a sudden, blue side jumping into the lead, rocketing into the lead. And excuse the pun with Jinx on our screen with that Q turned on. Uh, 2k gold lead now, just with that one kill. And now with Oriana finally getting close enough to blow on that last bit of the turn. Actually, hold that thought because Jinx thinking about it, but thinking better of it at the same time because getting within turret range of Leona never a good idea here. But yes, now that uh, Oriana did get that last uh, blow onto that turret here, uh, that's a huge amount of gold and Jinx with that eye, that infinity edging completed now, gonna be able to tear through this turret as well, even gonna uh, just try and deny some CS here. Leona does her best to interrupt the pathing of the creeps there, try and prevent them from getting within the Jinx range as long as possible. Does land a beautiful ultimate Onto that jam, but perhaps not enough, but Jinx is going to be pulled there. There's the ultimate onto two members from Orion, and that will be a kill going down. Jinx stepping way too far forward, got way overexcited, took a spear right to the face, and Graves, point blank ultimate, going to get the kill on her. So this blue side getting a little over aggressive there, and here comes the TP in from Lissandra. Where's the claw? Will she go for it? Just how thirsty is the Ice Queen? No, she's going to go up for Orion. She does have that ultimate available. There it is. Gonna flash out of the Nidalee Spear. Beautiful flash there. And here comes Janna, the disengaged queen to save her. Ultimate is available should they need it. But Rek'Sai is now the one who's uh, being focused on with those spears. Beautiful flash at the last second to make sure that spear does not connect. So a lot of summoners burn from this blue side. But in the end, overall, that is a one for one, I believe, was the total exchange there. And what happened was two turrets went down, uh, depending on how far extended out you want to count that, possibly even three turrets went down in favor of this blue side here during that uh, very extended exchange. And now, including this mid lane turret that just fell, that's only three to one for this red side. So blue side definitely getting the advantage out of that exchange. And now Jinx with a little bit of an item advantage here. Might be able to take out this Graves. Leona in tow, though. I'm not sure if she's a strong enough threat at this point to handle 2v1, but she's certainly looking to bait for it, if nothing else. <laughs> Fortunately, the AoE from Leona gonna proc that Relic Shield passive, so not gonna be able to hand over the Cannon Minion to Graves, but we'll still get some gold there. Right now, let's and just look briefly at this Cassandra who does have that raw bait is almost fully stacked here. Beautiful tunnel over to that Leona who is way too deep all of a sudden gonna be forced to flash down the flame chompers not make it to her in time. Uh, debating whether or not to go back in is Leona. Nautilus going in on his own not communicating with the team there maybe missing the uh, teleport that came in from Nasus and that's going to be a free kill onto this Nautilus a little lack of proper team communication there. Uh, dancing back and forth 
was Leone initially, and so was Nautilus, not really wanting to commit either way, and then right as Leona backed out, Nautilus went in, so that's going to be a free kill now, tying up the kills overall, letting that CS score really shine here. That's CS event. Oh my god, beautiful ultimate onto three people under their own turret from Oriana. That was gorgeous play. Now, this Nidalee is going to try and heal up people as much as possible, but Graves and Leona and Nidalee are all so low right now, they might have to go back just to give up this turret. Nautilus, unfortunately, hooking a minion, not quite able to get just far enough on that. You know, they will be able to, with all five members here, uh, prevent this siege from occurring any longer as Blue Side does finally back away. But in the meantime, do not forget good old Susan in the top lane, Q farming away. Now up to 468 additional damage in that Siphon Strike bonus, and poor uh, Janna is not going to be able to make it out of this one, even being Janna. <laughs> so, Nidalee will get the best of her there. Let's do a quick jump back here to see what happened exactly here. So I know people were disengaging. Look like Janna just opting to go forward to try and place another ward and walk right into a Nidalee Spear. Nidalee throwing down the Ignite as well. Gonna burn through that Janna shield. Um, we'll take that last little bit of damage to finish her off, but she does get the auto attack in the end, so... No one can escape in Italy, even a Janna. <laughs> At least not a Janna without an ultimate. So, good pick up there by Nidalee. Great map awareness to be prepared uh, to look around for stuff like that. And it looks like with that gl Glacial Shroud completed, Nidalee looking to go a little bit more damage heavy. Or excuse me, a little bit more tank heavy uh, than the, the traditional Nid mids we've been seeing lately. Uh, they go just pure glass cannon here. Uh, opting to go for that Iceborne Gauntlet. We'll get a lot of use out of the passive slow that comes with that item, so definitely a great chase item here for that Nidalee. We'll see uh, just how much she's able to make use of that, of that going forward. We see a uh, very far forward. Gonna even uh, miss the ultimate there. Wow, she does actually make it out of there all right. Does have to burn her ignite, but gets a flash in return. I'm very surprised to see... Uh, Oriana go that aggressive and not be punished for it at all. That was a very impressive play there. Uh, to have the game sense, I guess, to know where people were. They did, of course, have a ward here uh, in that area, so they could have. She could have seen any reinforcements coming, but that was still a very gutsy play by Oriana. Perhaps a little too risky. Uh, I would suggest playing a little bit safer than that. Uh, but it seems to be working out for them, so and I mean all the credit in the world for what turned out to be a good play and even trade there. Uh, actually a little bit uh, positive of a trade, obviously flash a little bit more uh, valuable than Ignite, so definitely a, good, a favorable exchange there. With Nasus already in the pit here, uh, hold that thought because this Rex I might be caught out. She's gonna try and tunnel away, but is blown up before she can get within range. And now, all of a sudden, this is a 4v5. All five members of the red side here, but Lissandra is so low right now. Lissandra essentially tanking it, taken out of the fight, and Nasus doing his thing. Ghosted. Huge. With that, a huge Q farm already as well. Doing so much damage, tanking up that front line. And that's exactly the kind of team fight you want to have. If you're this blue side, let's watch that one more time very quickly here. Watch as this red side is caught out a little bit early. Watch this Nasus. Keep your eye on Again, Nasus doing 540 extra damage on every Q. Definitely not going to be the one they focus on with that uh, tankiness already starting to show up here. Rek'Sai far more squishy. Caught out is blown up. That's the key ultimates already thrown out. And here's Nasus in the thick of things with that E. That E shreds that armor. So he already got quite a bit of damage down. Poked that Lissandra out. Throws down the E again. Is doing insane amounts of damage. And able to just finish off this Graves here with another Q. Oh, even as Graves flashed it in the very end, the Q range is stronger than the flash and that is going to be a four for one a near ace going in favor of the blue side as they pick up their first dragon of the game Italy actually looking to try and fight this but 
Definitely gonna have to think better of it here. The slow does come out, but here's Oriana. Actually, they might be able to make an extended ace here. How excited is Jinx gonna be when this kill comes her way? Oh my gosh, Nidalee might be able to make it out though. Oh no, Nasus doesn't have the teleport available, no, but the very tip of the zap will catch her. Very <laughs> close play there. Nidalee just barely not able to make it out. And that will be a very extended, but an ace nonetheless coming out for this blue side. And all of a sudden, that score, the gold lead, rocketing ahead for this red side, or for this blue side here, as they are now 7k in the lead. That is absolutely a massive amount of gold right now. And it shows with those items, uh, the locket already completed onto this Nasus, choosing... Uh, now that he's so far ahead with that 1015 with those uh, stacks already huge on him Gonna go for a little bit more of a team oriented build here given that Rek'Sai did get blown up so quickly there Perhaps a little miscommunication though as we do see the Aegis already built as well onto that Janna uh, Definitely do those passives do not stack so definitely don't like building uh, two of those on the same team if possible though uh, the uh, active on the locket itself is something that will stack uh, and it's something that can be used back to back here so that's not too bad um, overall and you know if Janna is concerned about getting blown up here I mean she has only died twice but she has technically died the most on her team so if she's got some some concerns about being a little squishy and uh, might possibly be focused down um, that's a good uh, redundancy to build on both of them and you know, I think this bot lane could be going down here. Jinx trying to find another way out. And there's the ultimate from Leona. They're going to stay trained on her. We'll go back and watch Jinx. But it looks like, no, Janna will be able to make it out alive. And Jinx, we're not even going to watch this. We saw what happened. She went back up. She knew that Janna had to get out by herself. That was the only way. So Jinx, being a good guy, running back in there, letting herself die, giving herself up for the support. Pro ADC is pro. <laughs> Um, but again, in the meantime, while all that was going down, while that huge chase, I mean, certainly, getting a kill on Jinx, definitely always want to do that when you can, put her behind as much as possible, but Nasus farming unchallenged in that top lane throughout that whole period of time. And with all that MR he has built, this Lissandra is absolutely, totally unable to challenge him. No fear. Uh, going up against this Lissandra right now. There's only once that Nautilus uh, is missing from their vision, once that Graves is up there in the top lane as well, that this Nasus decides to back away. And I assume that's going to be um, some more armor coming out of this Nasus as soon as he has some money to pick up his next items. Right now, just grabbing some more vision for his team with that pink ward. Getting a little cooldown reduction as well. Always great to see a Nasus. Uh, who understands he's going to be a little bit absent throughout some of those team fights initially as he farms up that Q. Uh, build some extra team oriented items here. Always pick up those pink boards. Always get those lockets. That always feels nice. Especially when you're a little bit ahead as Nasus too, so it doesn't put you too far behind here. You see that Janna does land the knockup, it does actually bait out her own teammates uh, with her there. That's slow, not going to matter too much, but Nasus plenty of mana at this point, not worrying too much about anything as far aside from that cooldown, which doesn't seem too significant and here we do see this bush is pink they're gonna throw in an inspecting uh nidalee spear there so they will uh spot him out great game sense there to not walk up into there and to check that bush first nasus going back to this mid lane here hanging out q farming up getting more and more scary as time goes on now we see rexai uh with that randuin's omen completed going to be able to dive right into the thick of these fights here and have a little bit more survivability this time be able to pop the active on that random and slow everybody down make that a little bit easier for jinx to kite for nasus to even kite uh, again nasus so strong already and he's back in the top lane 
does have that teleport available, so he's probably going to hang out in that top lane as long as possible, wait for uh, these uh, sieges to turn into something really important, which might have happened right here as Janus forced to ultimate, but that's going to be the Oriana ultimate catching two of them out. Nidalee did escape that, though. And Nidalee diving back in. She is exhausted, so she doesn't do too much damage. And the knockup gonna keep her in range for Jinx to get that last rocket, get excited. And Nasus with the teleport in, all of a sudden ripping people to shreds here. And that's gonna be two for nothing as Nasus walking up, gonna tank up that turret, gonna eat through this mid lane inner turret. And that's gonna be the fourth third of the, the game going down for this blue side here. As this game looks to have gone out of hand for the red side. Looks like they're going to try and take this dragon off to this well. And absolutely no way to contest this with the five members hanging out here. Jinx just breaking off to go take a little farm for herself. So now dragons are evened up two to two here. Seeing that Oriana backing right outside the pit. The red side will have a good idea of when that dragon timer is. So they'll know when to contest it next, as they will definitely want to contest the uh, third dragon. As we see Rek'Sai hitting that farm alarm. Trying to expand that tunnel network a little bit. As we see the Red side doing their best to clear out her network, clear out some vision. Looking very quickly just at the vision for the blue side. They definitely have a lot of vision invested in the top side of the jungle. So they might want to work on uh, baiting out a Baron fight. Because they will definitely have a lot of uh, potential to see where the enemy is coming from. What they're doing. And conversely the red side invested very heavily in warding the more dragon side of the map. Which is very unfortunate because after that last fight. Blue side was able to pick up that dragon essentially for free here. And this Baron is going to be cleared on out. Uh, actually, not going to be aggro. There's the aggro from the Nid Spear here. Going to get a little bit of damage onto Oriana. Not too much, though. As the dra the infamous Baron Dance begins. Jinx actually going to be able to land that Zap on her. Griff's trying to get a good position there. Possibly able to dash forward and then burst somebody down with that ultimate. But not going to be able to find anybody. Oriana not able to find out Lissandra with her ball either. You see that Oriana, of course, with that death, death cap and void staff completed, she is going to be a huge threat now. She has definitely hit her stride here. And is going to be looking to become an absolute nightmare if she can land her ultimate onto those squishies in these fights. They are going to be absolutely demolished here. And with the ability of Nasus to just run on in, ghost on in, Actually looking to possibly pick a fight here. Nasus hanging that up. No big problem. Here comes Rek'Sai into the fight. Now it is a 5v5 uh, situation here. And Nautilus actually a little caught out. Even as tanky as Nautilus is, he's not as tanky as this front line here with the Janna reinforced Nasus, who is going to get the wither. And that's going to be tanky Leona going down. That's a kill for this Oriana. Now 3-1-6. Ultimate still available for Oriana here. And this could mean the Baron going over to this blue side. Only Leona is down. But that's going to be enough. I mean, Nasus certainly able to tank this up. Oriana not going to take too much damage. She's going to be way far out with that ball doing all the work for her. Actually going to get a quite large bit of poke. Oh, Lissandra barely survives the Jinx ultimate. 40 hit points on her, and that is going to be enough to reset this Baron here. And no, they are going to decide to back away, let that Baron heal on up, reset there. Blue side really looking to get a fight more so than the actual Baron itself, but not really able to find what they're looking for. Taking quite a bit of damage here. Getting fairly low, but I mean, whenever Nasus is in the wings, that doesn't matter nearly as much. 
Nessus simply aggroes onto himself, and there you go. Nessus is absolutely able to chunk out a third of that turret with one Q. Disgusting display of power there. And that's again Leona going down. Tanky Leona with face of the mountain completed and a whole nother, uh, what is this, Kindle gem. <laughs> the health bead with cooldown, whatever that is. The Kindle gem. So tanky. But Nass is absolutely just able to eat through her. We do see that banner of command coming out uh, from this Janna here. He's actually opting to try and pick up the coin next as well to get that extra speed boost here to further position her team, enable her team to do even more. And again, when you have that 6, 2, and 5 Jinx, the 3, 1, and 7 Orianna, the 1, 0, 8 Nasus, who all have their significant item breaks here. I mean, Nasus, the only one who has a possible possible vulnerability in that he doesn't yet have any armor built, but everybody else seems to have their resistances ready, their pen ready. You know, an interesting choice on that Orion as well, uh, opting to not go for that Zonius, despite already having some MR from that Chalice completed, or excuse me, from the Athenes, Gonna instead go for another Spectre's Cow, uh, perhaps looking to just uh, avoid any Nid Spears coming out by getting a um, Banshee's Veil. Make sure that she's not chunked out of the fight. But she's gonna be very vulnerable to that Graves. Graves could actually be the hero in waiting here for this red team if they can get him into a position where he can get some massive burst damage onto this team that is actually. Very much lacking in armor. The only one with any armor is that Rek'Sai, who does, of course, have a range of oh, It's plenty of armor for you. But with that last Whisper now completed on the Graves, uh, he's going to be able to do a lot of damage in these team fights. We'll see if he can make the most out of that. I mean, he is 2 1 and 2, so he certainly does have that confidence in his mind, I'm sure. Almost with enough to complete that. I don't know, he just came out, I suppose. But he's working on that Bloodthirster here, so he's gonna have quite a bit of damage soon enough. <laughs> Instantly just re pinking that Baron. Throwing down a pink in a little bit better position. And that's gonna be the Baron started here. And with Jinx and Orion and Tell, that's gonna be a lot of damage. Nasus running zoning duty, and it looks like they are just gonna give that up and trade it for the third dragon to give themselves a little bit of speed boost here. But that will mean that the blue side gets the first variant of the game and the pushing power is gonna be very intimidating here. All five members are gonna stay grouped up right now. Gonna just push into that top lane. No one in position to get caught here as Nasus running out in the front. And again, Leona getting weathered, getting slowed, getting knocked up. And despite being so tanky, she's not able to survive it. And that is Leona going down. Four members are gonna be here, but it's too late. The turret's already gone in. This inhibitor simply is not gonna be defendable here. They're getting a valiant effort of a lot of poke in while that inhibitor does go down, but it's nothing that can really be stood up to, especially with that bearing up banner of command cannon minion there. The pushing power is absolutely insane right now coming out of this blue team. And now that is the base officially cracked from the red side. An 11k gold lead right now. We've definitely seen some matches uh, in this league go back Actually, a lot of damage onto that Graves. He's gonna barely survive that Ignite. I cannot believe that. Sidesteps the ultimate. We're gonna have to go back and watch the rest of this here, but I wanted to make sure he didn't die to Jinx off screen there. So low and double digits of HP here. Well, let's watch what happened here. Oriana gets flashed forward, but just so much damage onto Lissandra that Oriana just has so much damage right now. That was plenty to just take out Lissandra on her own. No help needed at all. And here's Nasus ghosting in, taking on that Leona so hard. The Wither gonna be uh, flashed away from here. As in Italy, doing her best to try and zone people away right now. But Nasus just so tanky. Already level 17 here. Watch those cues on the turret. 
He's gonna just chunk it away here. Doesn't care about tanking the light laser at all. And with two inhibitors down now, an over 12k gold lead. Or excuse me, an over uh, 11.5k gold lead. That's still actually not true. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, an over 10k gold lead and two inhibitors down. The Baron is looking to expire soon, I believe, though. With all these wards. I just don't know how this red side can come back from here. That's the final inner turret going down. Just barely any vision at all on this team. Nasus is going to go down to that Nidalee, though. And Jinx will get the return kill on the grave. It's going to force the flash out of the Nidalee. But that is a one-for-one. One. That's pretty good. I mean, if they can continue to get these one-for-one one trades here... That, I, that will slowly delay the game enough for this team to get back in it, and that's what they need right now. Beautiful hook from Nautilus, and that will be Jinx getting shut down. There's that delicious shutdown gold that this red side absolutely needed right now. Fantastic for them to kill that Jinx off. Oh, man, they've got to be celebrating right now. Goodness gracious. Well... <laughs> Uh, that's, let's not get too ahead of ourselves here as we do see they still are of course down uh, over 10k gold right now and do have both those nexus or excuse me those inhibitors down so the super minions are still flooding into the base the talisman of ascension is completed so the engages are just going to get harder and harder to avoid uh, the pushing power still just as strong and oh I do not think that na no Nautilus did not get that blue buff that was stolen away from from him by the Oriana. As we do see, it was in fact a Banshee's Veil completed on that Oriana. To try and dodge out of those Nitspears, dodge out of those Nautilus hooks. Um, a, a good choice to pick up here, but uh, that's definitely going to nerf a lot of the damage that could be coming out of Oriana. Uh, not that there's too much <laughs> damage they need to worry about on their team. Because look at this, I mean... 843 bonus damage coming out of Nasus. Nasus has hit that late game monster stage. Jinx with that Infinity Edge Phantom Dancer. Last Whisper completed. Going up towards a Bloodthirster as well. She's got so much damage. Oriana can uh, afford to play it a little safe here. As Nidalee does get caught up. But the ultimate from uh, Leona is going to be forced out. Uh, it does save that Nidalee, prevent any further engagement, but uh, it will mean that critical ultimate is down. Trying to do their best to clear out the wave here. Taking a lot of damage, even as Nasus here. Banner of Command Minion does finally die. In these extended sieges, that is very important of course no Baron currently on the blue side that is Jinx getting pulled by Nautilus but this might not be the fight they want here it's grave so low he's the only one that's not itemized against and Nautilus hooking Nasus to try and run out but he doesn't want to be by Nasus and now Graves so low barely gonna make it out alive so that is gonna be uh, Jinx getting killed so not nothing going over, and that actually is an overextension a little bit by Oriana. Gonna get punished by the Lissandra there, and finally Nasus is going down as well. A triple kill for this Nidalee, and I can't believe it, but the base has been defended by this red side. The gold lead is now sub 10k, and all of a sudden this red side is showing signs of life. They are gonna lose this inhibitor on the way back out, Graves. Not intimidating enough with that Randuin's completed now. Plenty of safety there with the Moby Boots as well on that Janna with the Captain and Chan. They know they're fine, so they'll take that inhibitor on the way out. So this mid lane inhibitor will be respawning soon. And the base has been defended now. There are no wards in the base to sneak and teleport to and try and finish. But, I mean, at the same time, perhaps we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Despite that miraculous defense, and we want to give full credit to this red side. Oh, and the fact that this middle lane inhibitor should be coming up soon. But at the same time, that is a period of time where three inhibitors are down. 
Baron's about to spawn. This dragon's gonna go down. That's gonna be the third dragon of the game for the blue side. So now the dragons are gonna be evened out here. And even with the super, the double super minions now stopped. I mean, you're still gonna have to deal with two super minions on either far side of the map here. I don't know how this dragon or this baron is gonna be contestable. They have to pull some sort of miracle steal, steal here. And the pressure isn't on in the mid lane, but this Baron is getting melted fast. The smite isn't in range. There's no Rek'Sai to be found here. Coming in way too late. Definitely could have been a contested thing if Nautilus had gone in to try and be a hero. But if Nautilus went down, even with the Baron working in their favor, I'm not sure they would be able to defend this base afterwards. But I'm not sure they can defend it now. I wasn't sure they could defend it last time though and they proved me wrong. So I'm ready and willing to be proven wrong here. Stranger things again have happened in this league, but there's a great engage by Rek'Sai. There's the slow and no, Graves is taken out. That has to be the game right there. Without that Graves damage, that's not going to be anything that can be stopped here. We do see the own wrecker built on Nasus. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that. As we see, that's going to be GG coming out. A very scrappy game from this red side. Just fighting as hard as they could to defend and pulling a miraculous defense, but in the end, they were already too far behind to come uh, back from with a game that gets so good in the late game with that Jinx, with that NASA. So that's gonna be the game coming out here in favor of the blue side. So first game in this best of three, going over to Google Ward Search over Bluehost. And looking very quickly here, because we are gonna hop into the next game immediately, Jinx. Absolute nightmare there, 42k damage, outpacing absolutely everyone, more than any two players almost on the enemy team. So uh, definitely going to be look to see if that Nasus and Jinx get banned out. The certainly Oriana was no slouch here. It's just going to have to be a completely different game strategy going into this game too. Uh, something more early game oriented, something more mid game oriented from all the lanes. I mean. Not that this wasn't, but you got to have even more pressure. Maybe swapping out that Nautilus for something a little bit more aggressive like a Rek'Sai. Uh, but we'll call out the game here and get into this next game so we can hurry up and uh, get this next one rolling here uh, for the people who are watching live. But if you uh, do want to see Game 2, please uh, go to this channel if you're watching in the archives. This Game 2 will be uploaded here, and I will be right back to you guys with that content. On the